The Cultural Heritage Centre for Asia and the Pacific is a centre in Deakin University in Melbourne, Australia. It's a fantastic place because we have all of these international students coming together, conversing with one another and dealing with the cutting edge of heritage management practices around the world. It's about understanding people's emotional relationships and the way in which these things play a role in their lives. And this means that we're very much interested in the relationship between heritage and individual and collective memory. We're a very interdisciplinary centre. We have people from cultural geography, archaeologists, anthropologists, historians, art historians. And we're interested in looking at the way in which heritage plays a role in people's lives. One of the areas we're particularly interested in it at the centre is the future of heritage studies itself. It's one of those areas of disciplines. Is it a post-discipline? Is it an interdisciplinary area? It's particularly interesting in that it brings together areas of expertise in, in academia that are from more established disciplines. So one of the things we're grappling is how do you bring together the different disciplines that speak to the need to preserve the material and, and a, an area that can feed into public policy that speaks to those social pressures. I started the uh, Cultural Heritage Centre um, because I'd been working since 1986 with UNESCO. At the time there was a lot of uh, dialogue uh, in Australia, a lot of discussion going on about Australia being part of the Asia region and needing to get to know our neighbours. The aims were to assist UNESCO's mission in the Asia Pacific, um, specifically to help universities uh, in, in the region develop programs in cultural heritage and we did that in, um, in Bangkok and in Manila and uh, we worked in Hanoi. And uh, then the other university reason was to develop uh, a group of people who were interested in doing research on cultural heritage matters in Asia. We're very used to thinking about heritage as being about celebration but increasingly people are interested in using it to deal with difficult pasts in ways that um, help to bring about social cohesion where once there might have been um, differences and difficulties. One of the great things about the CHICAP, the Cultural Heritage Centre for Asia and Pacific at Deakin, has been its relationship with Southeast Asia. And we've developed over a number of years the uh, uh, knowledge and expertise to run in-country field schools that are designed for both a local capacity building in those communities but also for our students to participate in. So recently we've been running one in the Kelabit Highlands in Borneo um, which is at the request of the local community to develop a community museum. One of the most interesting features to think about in heritage in Asia today is the, the politicisation and the ongoing politicisation of heritage in Asia today. Many of the countries within the region are changing so fast. Issues of cultural sustainability and the, the, the role culture and cultural, the cultural past plays within uh, issues like nationalism, diplomacy, development. One of the recurring themes is the ways in which heritage is now being part of those and being folded into those. One of the defining changes of Asia today is the rise of the middle class. That's having profound effects. So one of the interesting questions is, is there enough history for people to consume? And that's going to have a big implication for the relationships between past and present. I bring a, uh, a lot of um, bits and pieces of diversity into my work with our students and in relation to the expertise that my colleagues here at Deakin have. In addition to my work with Deakin University, I also hold an important international responsibility. I'm an international vice president of ECOMOS, which is the International Council on Monuments and Sites. It's an area of work which has both highly idealistic and highly um, contested aspects. So it's a very um, interesting way into the subject of the international arena, where Australia fits in the world, what kind of ideas come from here and, and what kind of ideas we can respond to in other places. It's given me some huge insights into the way different parts of the world think about heritage, speak about heritage and manage their cultural heritage. So this is a very rich resource for me to use in my teaching and research here at Deakin University. Earlier this year in June 2013, 
I was honoured to be made a member of the Order of Australia for my contributions to cultural heritage, both in Australia and internationally, and for my contributions to education. I'm really proud to and humbled to receive, receive this award. It's a good measure of the profile that our centre has been able to achieve internationally in the region for Asia and the Pacific and here in Australia.